Hello and welcome to another episode of Practice With Me. I had a few requests to practice Dirt Mouth from the Hollow Knight Piano Collections, so that's what we're going to practice today. We're just going to look at the first page and a half or so, but there's a lot to talk about in that page and a half. You can download the first page and a half of the score in the description below, so you can follow along with what we do. Okay, let's start. So I'm going to play the first page and a half just to see where we are at. I haven't practiced this piece since I recorded it like a year ago, so we'll see where things are at. Okay, so I haven't forgotten too much since I recorded it a year ago. <laughs> okay, so Dirtmouth is a pretty simple tune. You have a left hand accompaniment and then a right hand melody. So let's take a look at the accompaniment. So that's just the first four measures of the left hand. So if you guys remember the original theme in the game, there is some push and pull in the tempo. And in the piano collections, it does say rubato at the beginning. So the tempo doesn't need to be a metronome. Although I always recommend to first learn the piece in a steady tempo, and then you do rubato and ritardandos and stuff like that. Why don't we take a listen to the original theme quickly? So I want you to listen to the rubato and the accompaniment. I don't know if you can hear that, but most of the tempo fluctuation is happening at the end of measures. So one and two and here does, slows it down a little bit and then it picks up, slows down. So most of it is happening there at the end of the measure. So I'm going to kind of imitate that a little bit. So I'll play the first four measures. Oh, no. Yeah, sounds nice. Now, I remember when I recorded this piece, the very beginning was very hard. For some reason, starting this note in the right hand, in the left hand, the starting notes, it's just so hard to get the right sound. You want this nice balance between the left and right hand. You want the melody to stand out, but you don't want it to be like screaming. That one's good. So we're always taught to play with our fingertip, but actually in this case, it helps actually to play with more of the pad of your finger rather than the tip. So more of the pad. The pad offers a little bit of a shock absorber when you play the key. So it's a little bit easier to get a more warmer sound than it is to play with your fingertip. With your fingertip, it's easy to get very sharp and articulated sounds. But in this case, I, I want to use more of a flatter finger. If I play with my tip, 
I can still get the right sound, but... Yeah, I mean, I can still get the right sound, but it's just... I feel more uncomfortable. Okay, so let's take a look at the right hand. So when you have very simple tunes like this, something with just a, an accompaniment and a melody, thinking about phrasing is the number one thing you should be thinking about all the time. So what does the melody do here in the beginning? Okay, so it goes up a little bit, just a little bit, just a third. And then back down. And there's this leap down to you. Phrasing is really all about very small micro crescendos and decrescendos. Very small ones. So I think... Mm, no. No, left hand is too loud. So when I go up here in the theme, just have a tiny crescendo. De, da, da, just a little bit. And a little bit less when I go back down to the F sharp. We want to be a little bit less there at the end of this phrase. So when you have the B to the C sharp, be a little bit less, just a little bit. Crescendo just a little bit, a little bit less, and now even less. Okay, that was not very good. Uh, let me try that one more time. Mm. You know, it also helps. This is a little bit of a advanced trick, but it helps to play the right hand just a split second before the left hand. Just a little bit, though. So, so small that you almost can't hear it. Yeah, so what I was saying about playing the right hand a little bit before the left hand, I, I didn't say why to do that. <laughs> playing the right hand a little bit before the left hand just makes the melody sound like it's blossoming wah, rather than just instantly there. Duh! So if you play the right hand just a little bit before the left hand, it just sounds wah, it sounds nice. Okay. Let's take a look at the next four measures. This is the second line. So it's pretty much the same as the first measure. Still think about the same idea with the fur raising. I don't think that idea that we talked about in the first four measures of the phrasing, I think that should apply to the second line as well. I think you should think about how to play this a little bit different though, just to add a little bit of variety to the music. In the original recording of Dirt Mouth in the game, the music actually moves a little bit more. There's a little bit less rubato. And I kind of did that as well. I moved a little bit more, or maybe moving is not the right word, but I just had less rubato. I just kept the tempo moving along. And remember to be softer at the end of the phrase, so we, uh... Third line. Mm -hmm. 
So in the third line, it's the same as the very beginning, but it just adds a few notes. Some thirds, and then a chord here. And it's also marked mezzo piano, so a little bit more sound. But you don't really need to give it too much more sound because you're going to have a little bit of extra sound from having the, the thirds and then the chord. So don't push the volume too much here. Just a tiny bit and then the extra notes will take care of the rest. softer at the end of the phrase. Oh, something new. Nice. So the very last line on the first page, we have something a little bit different. Also, by the way, the theme here is the main theme. except it's moved to a mode rather than being in a straight fo forward minor key. And some of the notes are removed. So the theme of Dirtmouth is the same as the main theme, but it's moved to a mode rather than a minor key. And it's a more skeletal version of the main theme, so some notes are taken out. It's pretty cool how all the Hollow Knight themes are related to each other in some way. Okay, back to the last line on the first page here of Dirtmouth. So I think because we have a bunch of major chords here, we have C major, D major, F major, G major. Open up a little bit, so have a little bit more sound and make it sound like a flower opening up or something. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds nice. It also sounds nice if you crescendo as you go up in the right hand. So, da, de, da, da. It goes up, and then C, and then back down. So crescendo as you go up this. Crescendo a little bit. And now we're going back down. Nice. And what I like to do here, when you reach that eighth note before the very last measure of the first page, I like to make it like a sigh almost as you go into the B. So C is the eighth note, B is the half note. So ya dum, ya dum. So you'll be a little bit less on the B. So uh, eighth note C, ya da B dum. So it sounds like a sigh. Ya it gives the music a little bit of e emotion. So I'll play the full last line again. Sigh. Yeah, that sounds nice. Okay, let's move on to the second page. So right at the top. Okay, so some pretty cool things are happening in, on the second page here. So... So it's actually kind of like the beginning. If you, if you leave out these top notes... So if you leave out those top notes, it's just the same as the beginning. And then these thirds again. Leave out those top notes. Oh, and then the B jumps up. I see. So think of those triplets, those eighth note triplets, as just kind of sparkle. It's just there to add some sparkliness to the sound. <laughs> Now, there's some decisions to make here when we get into this third measure, fourth measure, and the fifth measure. There's two different things happening here at once. When we play these eighth notes triplets, when we get up to this high F sharp,
there's kind of two themes happening at the same time. So we have this high F sharp and then D Don. This sounds like the main theme, but then an E and then an E again. I'll play it from the eighth note triplets on the third measure. Uh, let me try that again. <laughs> So that was with me bringing out the top part. Now, if I bring out the bottom, so this is measure four, we have a C sharp, A, G, then it technically continues, F sharp, uh, yeah, and then it splits off into two themes again here. We'll, we'll leave that for later. So again, from measure three, the second page, I'll bring out the bottom part this time rather than the, the high notes. Try that again. <laughs> so either one sounds good. If you want to bring out the high high notes, that's good. If you want to bring out the low notes, that's fine. I like to bring out the low notes and just have have these as just a a counter theme or whatever. So I'll start from the top of the second page and we'll play for five measures. Yeah, and then if we continue... So from the second measure of the second line, second page, lots of twos, lots of seconds, we have the F sharp, then the, the F sharp is the beginning of two different themes. So here is the theme that we know, F sharp, da, 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 F sharp again, and then let's see, what which one does it go to? It goes to a D here, half note, E. So that's the main theme. But the F sharp, this is measure two, second line, also goes down to a D later on. Like you see the little dashed lines. So play the F sharp, follow the dashed line to the D, and then the dashed line again up to a C sharp. So it's pretty cool too. So one, So that's when the F sharp goes down. And then here it is again when you play the notes that are higher. So again, you have to think which theme you want to bring out. Uh, you probably should bring out the main theme, the top part. I think that's probably the more important part uh, because it continues. The bottom part, if you follow the, dash, the dashed lines, it sounds cool, but it doesn't really continue. It just kind of stops before the end of the phrase. I think the end of the whole entire phrase is measure 25, first measure of the third line. But you could bring out the bottom part too. Here's me bringing out the bottom part. And here's me bringing out the top part. I kind of like to hear the bottom counter theme, I guess we'll call it. So D, follow the dashed lines. It's kind of cool to hear that. So I think I like when I bring that out. So let me play from the top of the second page all the way to measure 25. So right at 25 here, you have a three note chord in the right hand. I think it's cool if you da, da, bring out the E more than the, the G and the B in the chord. So 
So it goes, so the theme will go, I, uh, So the way you bring out certain notes more than others in the same hand when you're playing chords, you need to make sure you have more of the weight of your arm on that side of the hand. So if you're playing the top, have more of your weight over here on this side of your hand. Or if you're playing the thumb, have more of the weight of the arm on that side of your hand. Also, something else is that you need to play the note just a split second before the other notes. So this is exaggerating. <laughs> so right now, I'm bringing out the top part, the E. The weight of my arm is on this side, but I'm also playing the E just a little bit before the G and the B. But the gap between me playing the E and the G and the B is so small that you can't really hear it. Uh, that was bad. <laughs> so the the E is coming before the lower notes. It's the same thing if I had to play more with my thumb, the G. I have I have to make sure the G comes a little bit before the top notes. So. It's just a little bit though, but that's a little trick for how to voice chords that's what it's called voicing when you bring out certain notes in a chord more than the others all right so i'll play from the beginning all the way up to measure 25 on the second page and we'll end there That's the first page and a half of Dirt Mouth. I hope there was something to learn here. I guess this episode was kind of about phrasing, I guess, and shaping. And all right, I guess we'll end it here. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And as YouTubers say, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. See you later.